हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस वीडियो ऑन फ्रांसिस बेकन इज गोइंग टू बी अपलोडेड एट योर रिक्वेस्ट बिकॉज वेन आई वॉज डीलिंग विथ फ्रांसिस बेकन आई डिलीवर्ड माई इंट्रोडक्टिव लेक्चर सो यू रिक्वेस्टेड फॉर सम वीडियो लेक्चर सो आई हैव रिकॉर्डेड माई लेक्चर एंड अपलोडेड इट on my channel so that will be for your benefit in this uh, lecture in this video lecture uh, i'll give an introduction to francis bacon and in the second video lecture i will analyze the essay of studies which is prescribed in your course francis bacon uh, as all of you know is a prominent elizabethan essayist philosopher scientist and jurist when i say elizabethan i mean uh, the age from 1558 to 1603 he came of a family interested in state affairs his father being lord keeper of the seal and his uncle queen elizabeth's principal minister He was born in London in the year fifteen sixty one. He attended Cambridge, studied law, and was elected to Parliament and appointed Queen's Counsel in the year fifteen ninety eight. Under James First, James First, all of you know, uh, ruled English throne from sixteen hundred three to sixteen hundred twenty five. So under James First, his fortunes rose, uh, you know, higher. until he finally became lord high chancellor in the year 1618 lord high chancellor the highest judicial post in the country he was knighted made baron verulam and viscount saint albans what happens when he was at the height of fortune he suddenly tumbled down he was charged with at Uh, admitted to accepting bribes from litigants he was imprisoned briefly uh, banished from court and removed from public office some of his important works are advancement of learning novum organum and the new atlantis bacon is the uh, famous representative a uh, writer of renaissance learned worldly ambitious and intriguing i am reminded of a famous statement given by alexander pope a neoclassical poet uh for bacon he said he described him as the wisest brightest and meanest of mankind this was a statement which was given by alexander pope for francis bacon now the essays of bacon have morality which is utilitarian opportunistic and machiavellian when i say utilitarian meaning is that utilitarianism uh, in normative ethics uh as a tradition stemming from the late 18th and 19th century english philosophers and economists jeremy bentham and john stuart mill according to which an action or a type of action is right if it tends to promote happiness or pleasure and wrong if it tends to produce unhappiness or pain so the philosophy or the morality of bacon is utilitarian uh, it is opportunistic and it is also machiavellian when i say machiavellian meaning is machiavellian means suggesting the principles of conduct laid down by machiavelli machiavelli who was an italian diplomat philosopher and historian uh, who lived during the renaissance he is best known for his political treatises the prince which was written about 1513 uh, 
uh, and when i say machiavellian it means machiavellian is something which is marked by cunningness duplicity or bad faith so you can summarize bacon's morality in three words that is utilitarian opportunistic and machiavellian william blake a famous 19th century poet he said that the essays of bacon are i quote good advice for satan's kingdom this was the sentence which was given by william blake that is essays are good advice for satan's kingdom now bacon's every essay is the fruit of his own experience distilled through the alembic of his marvelous mind his desire for knowledge can be summed up in his own words and bacon himself said that i have taken all knowledge to be my province this was the statement given by bacon himself i have taken all knowledge to be my province now his essays are a tissue of maxims quite unlike the subjective conversational essays of montaigne if i say bacon and montaigne uh, you know that montaigne is the father of uh, essay and bacon borrowed the form the essay from montaigne the french essayist bacon and montaigne share the form of the essay but not uh, its spirit uh, montaigne is personal familiar and prolific but bacon is formal curt and impersonal montaigne appeals to the heart but bacon's to the head he used it not as a vehicle of self revelation as montaigne did but a repository of dispersed meditations impersonal practical and worldly so though he borrowed the form from bacon from montaigne but is different from montaigne as i have just told you now if you uh, just look at some of the characteristics of bacon's uh, essays then you will find out that bacon bacon's essays are number 1 full of practical wisdom number 2 epigrammatic jottings number 3 quotes from classics number 4 scientific temperament number 5 machiavellian attitude and number 6 his style which is axiomatic terse and pithy now if uh, uh, i mean i say bacon style it's unique kind of style as i have just told you uh, aphoristic style what we call this is important for lucidity clarity economy precision directness and mathematical plainness his essays seem like a collection of short and pithy maxims and tremendous compression bacon tried to put more and more ideas in less and less words what we call gagar mein sagar each sentence can convey a deep and concentrated meaning i would like to uh, give you some examples from different essays the essay which is prescribed no course of studies look at the line some books are to be tasted others to be swallowed and some few to be chewed and digested this is a line from of studies look at the line a forestic a sentence bacon has tried to put more and more ideas in say one line then there is a line from his essay of discourse the line is he that questioneth much shall learn much and content much then there is a line from of suspicion from the essay of suspicion he says suspicions among thoughts are like bats among birds he has said plenty of things in the single sentence look at the line from of truth a mixture of a lie doth ever add pleasure this is from of truth look at the line from of riches the ways to enrich are many and most of them foul 
look at the line from the essay of great place it is a strange desire to seek power and lose liberty or to seek power over others and lose power over a man's self very practical you know wisdom he has given this is in in this line a pithy sentence short and crisp sentence and in these condensed line he has said plenty of things now his essays uh, were published in three separate editions during his lifetime the first edition was brought out in 1597 with 10 essays the second edition was brought out in 1612 it contained 38 essays in all of which 29 were entirely new the third and the last edition was published in 1625 it contained 58 essays of which 20 were entirely new so total number of essays written by bacon are 58 published in three different editions one in 1597 one in 1612 and the last in 1625 ligui uh, uh, who has written a, a famous book on history of english literature he has rightly remarked about bacon's essays that his essays are the classics of english prose thank you very much